Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to the start of a new reaction series. Uh, Nala is next to me as she usually is when things are going on and she's trying to get some attention, but we are about to start the first episode of the Wheel of Time series coming to us from Amazon. I am nervously excited. I have been seeing a lot of reviews and they're fairly mixed, but it does sound like people who are fans of the book series so far are pretty happy. So that, you know, that's what matters most to me. That So if they approve, I'll probably approve. So I'm hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. Um, the first three episodes were all released at the same time this first night. I'm going to do my best to try and watch all three of them uh, right away, and so that I'll be able to get all of the episodes up on Patreon as fast as possible, and hopefully the first one onto YouTube pretty soon. And yeah, I'm pretty tired tonight, but I really want to do it, so hopefully I'll make it through all three. Um, even with crazy cats all around trying to get attention, but... Uh, Alright guys, I don't want to waste any more time, I'm really hyped for this. Episode 1 of Wheel of Time, here we go. Starts right in. Many, many years ago, men who were born with great power believed they could cage darkness itself. Mm -hmm. The arrogance. When they failed, the seas boiled, mountains were swallowed up, cities burned, and the women of the Aes Sedai were left to pick up the pieces. Ooh, okay. Yeah, the ring is a bit bigger These than I... These women remembered one thing above all else. The man who brought the breaking of the world. And him, they named Dragon. Now, this man has been born again. We don't know where or to whom, if he was reborn as a girl or a boy. Mm. The only thing we know for certain is that this child is coming is an of interesting age change. Now, and we must find them. Before the dark does. We can't die like this. You can fight them. Use it. Man with the power. Don't hurt him. We can channel. It's not his fault. Who are you talking about? There's no one else here. What? Oh, he's going. Mm. Madness already has him. Yeah. This does. Please. No. Please. It's not him. <laughs> so a gentling? Is that was what that was? Years ago. Almost to the day of the prophecy, the dragon reborn predicted. He's able to touch the source. It's not him. Ooh. Name yourself, stranger. I'm not saying anything. Landmon Dragorin. This is my reign. <laughs> my lady, can I help you? <laughs> we'll need stables Excuse for you? our horses and a room for the night. Two beds and fresh linen, that's all we need. Of course, Moraine Sedai. Yeah, they made the ring big enough that it's kind of hard to miss it. Definitely an advertisement if you're close up to them. Hm. I'm sorry, it's just I'm thinking about something that I need. Oh, oh. They have this at all. It could be warmer. 
Oh, that was a hint. <laughs> Such an interesting turn of events to me. This. You let me fall asleep. You act as if I had some say. The more seriousness of this uh, relationship. What happened out there today? But I prove. It wasn't today. It was before. Nynaeve. She asked me to become her apprentice, to study to be a wisdom someday. What? No, she you... asked. I didn't say yes or no. Really? I'm going to. I know. I already know. Jesus, wow, so she was going to do it <laughs> just to be a wisdom, even before the whole Aes Sedai. It's really interesting. How long does it take before the Wheel of Time turns someone's spirit back into the world again? Mm. Wish I knew. But I'm sure there's a reason no one can remember their previous lives. All we can do is the best we can with the life that's given to us. Some Gandalf wisdom. We'll take comfort from it. Hmm. But no matter what happens, when pain we face, our heartbreak, even death. Keeps turning. Always. We try again. Maybe do a little better than the last time. with the two rivers. This is very much what I was picturing. Oh boy, here it goes. No, holy 
shit! They pulled a descent. I appreciate that they're showing her looking really tired after all of that. Twenty years ago, there was a woman at the White Tower. An Aes Sedai born with eyes so white she couldn't see anything. Yet still she saw glimpses of the turning of the wheel. The Dark One is waking. His whispers are already in the backs of our minds. But there will be one who can stand against him. The dragon has been born again. They're just... she's just telling him right off you. the bat. You fully lost your mind. <laughs> That's what... <laughs> the smile. Right. Karen's like... Whatever, I'm just in a daze. The wheel of time turns. And ages come and pass. Mm -hmm. Leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth. And even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. Wait, did he give him the sword? He must have and they just didn't show it to us and then they'll show it later, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's it right there, right? He's got it. <sighs> Alright, well, that was episode one of The Wheel of Time. Um... If you guys are watching the full-length reaction to this, I'm sure you've kind of noticed there has been some issues because I assume because so many people are trying to watch it at the same time, but with buffering, so some things, I don't know how, maybe some things are possibly going to be not exactly lined up perfectly or, or missed over in, when I get this together, so hopefully it's not that bad. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, so the first episode, so far... I'm pretty pleased. There were some things that they changed that definitely surprised me. Um, there was a lot of things that they accelerated that did not surprise me and that made a good amount of sense. Um, they also like gave hints to things um, that, you know, didn't come until much later in the book series, but I think it's good that they lay the groundwork earlier on in the series, so those all made sense to me. Um, yeah. I feel like it's kind of difficult at this point to decide how much I should talk about with this as an adaptation because for people that are watching this right now who are new to the series, I don't want to give away any spoilers. Um, but I think there's some things that I can still talk about. So to begin with, I think a lot of people are going to be uncertain about how they were doing with the fight scenes because there was a lot of like shaky cams and you know when they were following like um Eguine around uh and it, it was very, and and Matt you know it could get very shaky but I do think that that was probably the best way to go to be honest because if you guys saw the Trollocs, they put a ton of detail into those costumes. Like, they were pretty elaborate and they were intense and they looked big and they looked scary as they should. But, let's be honest, if they were just steady cam on those and you were constantly in close-ups and watching them fight, they probably would look a little bit ridiculous and, and costumey. But with the way that they did it, it actually, you know, I feel like made them look better than they would have. Um, and I also would say that it kind of also makes sense because if we're supposed to be following the characters and their point of view, they were very much in a, a hectic situation. Um, in terms of Maureen channeling and utilizing the one power, I also personally liked the way that it looked, the way that it came out. Um, again, I know that there's going to be differences of opinion on this. There was even with the trailer. I was always... I. I pretty on board. It seems like kind of what I imagined, at least to some degree. Um, but I know a lot of people are going to strongly <laughs> disagree with that. But for me, I was pretty satisfied with that. And I have to say, 
Watching Maureen and Lan uh, working together and fighting together, that was sick. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that, the way that they choreographed it. Um, went really well. So far, I'm, I'm really liking the two of them together. Some of the things that I will mention and sort of mention that changes. So, Perrin. Oh my god. <laughs> way to definitely start this series out with him having an extreme extreme event happening that's going to put him in a world of hurt and grief so that he's basically just a like walking numb zombie type figure going with them it, he didn't like care or have any concern he was just going to go along with it no matter what so i don't know i i think in some ways it's an interesting it's a good change because it'll give a little bit more background development to him going in and i know that's they that's kind of what they were doing the same with matt um though i'm not sure well we'll see we'll see how it's gonna play out i don't have a problem with those things though i think they're especially since they were aging them up and related to that if you didn't read the books Egwin and rand Definitely had not consummated their relationship uh, when when we were here. So just to say, uh, like I'll just say it like that without giving away too much of anything. So that was that was a big change that they also made, but I think also a good one because as they age them up, it makes sense. It also adds some depth, so that that could that can um, contribute to the seriousness of their feelings and things that might happen later. I also think it's interesting that she was already, she had already kind of made the decision, even before any Aes Sedai or anything came into it, just to be a wisdom, she was going to step away from him. And he knew that. So before they even start out here, basically they've already come to that conclusion, which is really fascinating. And I'm sure that there will be a lot of interesting dynamics between the two of them um, as they go along on this journey, as they think about whether that was the right choice or not, and how they feel. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Nynaeve! So she got she got pulled away there by a Trolloc, and then she just disappears, and everyone's, like, they're presuming that she's gone. I think that, I mean, it's kind of good. It's a way for her to, Moraine and Lan, to get the others out of there without her <laughs> contesting in any way, shape, or form. Um, but I'm curious what they're gonna, how they're gonna incorporate that later with her. Again, I, I can't say, I, I, you can't say too much, you know? Um, but yeah, like the introductory things. So we saw some of the Red Aj, Aes Sedai, and they're definitely, it's not just like a little veil that tells the difference between their colors. We also saw Moraines, of course, but it's basically like a full-on cloak. And... I don't, I think that's fine. It looks pretty good. It's something also, you know, again, you've got to adapt things to television. You've got to make certain choices and, and the audience that isn't familiar with the source material, I think that will help with the differentiation. Um, I would also, so then they also didn't have the scene of, of Rand getting his father's sword, so I wonder if they're going to do some sort of flashback to that being a conversation before they left. Um, because I would have kind of expected that, especially since how they, they did it at the end, that was a bit abrupt, um, where she just dropped that information on them and was like, yeah, we gotta go, and then, they, then we just see them, like, with everyone else seeing them off, so there must have been some quick conversations, at least, before that happened. Um, so I wonder if we'll get like a little flashback, which would make sense because I'm sure that they want the actor in more than one episode. Um, it ended pretty much about where I expected the first episode to end, given that we know that they're progressing faster through this than, than much faster than the books. So I'm not surprised with that. I do think it's super interesting that she just straight up told them, one of you is the dragon reborn. Not just that they're looking for one of you, and I don't know which one it is, um, and that the Dark One has a purpose that they want one of you for, um, but straight up the Dragon Reborn. Because, of course, in the books, that's something that 
what she's actually thinking and why she's actually looking for one of them is not fully revealed until later. It's You just know that, that she's looking for one of them because the Dark One's looking for one of them um, and that there's something about them. So yeah. And they only know that as well. And we find out that one of them is the Dragon Reborn long before they, any of them, actually find out also that that's why she's looking. That's who she's looking for. Um, I'm assuming that they probably did it this way just because one, again, as kind of like for the audience to kind of follow along, especially if you're new to the story at all. And maybe also because it'll give some ability, I guess, to to talk about that um, amongst each other, kind of like they had the Nynaeve and Moraine discussion that would set up a lot of their later um, antagonism and Nynaeve's hostility, because we won't have the internal dialogue, so to speak. Um, and I think they did a good job with that, with the Nynaeve Moraine uh, conversation, so it could work out. I'm curious to see how it's going to play out. It's an interesting change, but honestly, I feel like so far I don't really have an issue with any of the changes. They all kind of make sense to me in terms of a television show um, and what they're trying to do. So, And I'm pretty happy with what we've seen. So yeah, we've got two more episodes. I'm really excited to watch them. So I'm going to wrap this one up here and then jump into it. Thank you guys so much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.